All right, what's up, YouTube? Today we're going to talk about how to easily manipulate, modify, add to, and subtract from STL files that you obtain on the internet. This is in reference to making remixes on Thingiverse or just modifying previously designed STLs in CAD program to make your life a little bit easier. So if that's something you're into, go ahead and stick around. All right, so I'm in the Tinkercad environment. It's a little bit different. It's a Tinkerblock setup. It's a visual type thing. It's provided for free from Autodesk. You can go to Tinkercad.com, get a username and password for free. The free software, this isn't going to be as complex as something like an Onshape, uh, AutoCAD, Fusion 360, anything like that. But what it is good for is for visual people, and I'm a visual person. So basically what you do is you add and subtract from this work plane environment in Tinkercad, uh, just kind of doing it visually, not really off of pure specific measurements. Um, it works really great for beginners, and for me it works really well for just easily adding, subtracting, or modifying uh, STL files. So a little disclaimer here, obviously STL files are someone's intellectual property. If they have marked it as a copyright, don't use it and modify it and use it as your own. I mean, just common sense guys, like be a good person it's very simple okay so let's say I found an STL so for example we use one of mine I found an STL um, I brought it into the Tinkercad using import and then just bring in the STL file and for some reason it's all grouped up because the person that made it wanted you to print it that way or whatever but you want to modify it a little bit and it comes in grouped in four pieces like this one is, right? So now, after we import it into Tinkercad, it just becomes another object. So this is just technically another object and we can modify it however we want. We can't ungroup it, right? Because to Tinkercad, this is all one large object. It's like a block or a cylinder that you added into the program. But what we can do is, let's say we wanted to isolate just this cup portion of this STL. So what I'm going to do is Control D. I'm going to duplicate it. Right? I'm duplicating it in place. So right now there's one over another. So there's two versions of this thing on the work plane. So if I bring this down, you can see that. I'll change the color. See, there's two of those now because I did Control D and duplicated in place. So let's say I just wanted this circle. What we have to do then is we have to come in, in in here and just cut out everything but the circle. So what I'm using here is a block that is selected as a hole. And that hole means it'll cut anything that it touches. I'm just going to go in here a little bit carefully, make sure it doesn't touch the thing we want. I'm going to go in here. Make sure that it doesn't influence this cup at all. And that would show up as a dark area on the cup if it was actually hitting the cup. So I'm going to come down. Hold on here. I'll move my head around. But right here is the snap grid area. And I can click this. And I can turn this off. And that gives me very fine resolution on where I can be or where I can move this arrow. So large, small, it gives me, what is that, uh, a tenth of a millimeter movement instead of, or actually that gives me a one one hundredth movement of a millimeter instead of this high or low resolution snapping to the the build plate which is one millimeter. So. I'm going to turn that off. I'll put my head back here in the corner. And then I'm going to move this in and out until I don't see any gray. See how that turns gray? That means that's intersecting with that shape. And I want to preserve my cup. So I'm going to bring that away from the cup and making sure that I get over this part without touching the cup. 
Oh, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I can do it. Oh, that's going to be a big pain. Well, that's good. It's a tutorial. So I'm just going to take this square and I'm just going to move it at a slight angle. I'm going to put it like that. Then it gets rid of that and doesn't touch the cup. And then I'm just going to control D the square or rectangle, I guess it would be. And then I'm going to bring it like this. And like that. So now I have it down to the base of the work plane, all the way up to the top. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select them all. I just clicked and dragged the mouse. I selected everything. I'm going to group those. And there we go. Okay. Ah, come on, go back. There we go. Okay, so now that I have everything together here and I have the blocks cutting away the portions that I don't want I'm going to go in and I'm going to duplicate with a control D so now I have two sets of everything except the portions that are going to cut away so now I'm going to select everything in there and I'm going to do a shift and select the cup now I'm going to group so that's getting away, that's taking away one set of these peripherals around the cup. So now we can go in and remove the duplicate of the whole STL file. And what we're left with is just a freestanding cup with no peripherals. Okay? So that's how you separate them apart. So now, let's say I just wanted to have this one peripheral on this this STL file. Well, it's the same exact process that we just did. I'm going to take it and I'm just going to duplicate it. I don't have to duplicate it in place for this one, but I'll keep the STL over here. And then all we're going to do again is take the square or a rectangle. We're going to remove everything we don't want. using a series of, of rectangles, cubes as it were, and then we're just going to group that again. So that gets rid of everything but this, right? Then you can go on so forth, on and on and on. So then adding and subtracting to these is, at this point now, this individual cup is just a basic object as if it were in Tinkercad. So uh, as if you created it yourself. So let's say we wanted to maybe have this be some sort of cup holder that you could get something out of. I don't really know. But let's just put a circular cutout in the front. So it's the same principle here as it is with any other Tinkercad object. You come up with what you want it to look like in your head. So let's just say, I don't know, something like that, maybe a little thinner. Then we'll align them with the align tool. So I know it's centered. I'll make this a hole. I'll group these two. And now it's got a cutout so I could grab something out of that container or something if I wanted. So this is the same with adding to this individual container. No big deal. Just throw it uh, whatever you would want to add to it. And then what I do when I, when I try and add things that are thin, like an outer perimeter, thin outer perimeter, what I like to do is slow down because it's a tutorial. But what I like to do is I take this object I want the outer perimeter to go, I duplicate that, send this one out, I make this a hole, and I take this piece I'm going to add to it, and I move it in 
to the whole version to the cutout version of the the thing I want to add that to you can put this one then in there or have the duplicate separate and group it but I'm just going to do this to make it easier to understand I'm going to group that now I have that curve that I know will be the curve for this on that piece already so I know when it comes in it's not going to go through that thin wall and it'll just match up perfectly to it right I'm going to group those two and then they're going to become one STL file like that and then this of course can be modified again and again and again so it's just it's a building block scenario you know just putting in what you want figuring out how you want it to go you can do anything in Tinkercad you just have to figure out how to do it in certain steps that's what makes some of this other CAD software so powerful like Fusion 360 things like those uh, programs because you can basically have the program do some of the thinking for you so and especially with like assemblies or anything like that any parts that need to move together Fusion 360 is gonna it's gonna trump Tinkercad just because you know you're doing a visual representation on Tinkercad you can do those things but it's a little bit tougher because you're not getting really high dimensional accuracy but I've been using Tinkercad now for I don't know how long like seven months now or something and it's it works you can design things and make it work so um, yeah so basically that's how we can isolate individual files from a uh, imported STL file. That's how we can add and subtract from STL files as if they were just normal shapes in the Tinkercad environment. And yeah, you can apply these processes to anything. So if you wanted to add text or if you wanted to add, import an SVG and add it to somewhere or subtract it, this all works that way and Tinkercad's a great way to easily modify small STL files. So if you enjoyed this, please drop a like, maybe even subscribe. Love to have you aboard. Keep your amps up and your filament dry. Yeah.